Tony and I want to welcome you to our study in the Psalms. We're in Psalm 42 today. I've been praying the Psalms for a long time, and today when I prayed through Psalm 42, one of the questions I asked is, do I really mean what I'm saying here? And I remember Jesus' words where he told his opponents, these people honor me with their words, but their heart is really far away from me. So I had to ask God, how about my heart? Where am I with you? So if you would, please join me, join Tony, and let's examine ourselves as we pray this prayer. The writer of the psalm was grieved that God seemed to be absent or silent in his life. Even his enemies noticed the lack of God's presence in his life. As a deer longs for a stream of cool water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for you, the living God. When can I go to worship in your presence? Day and night I cry, and tears are my only food. All the time my enemies ask me, where's your God? Psalms 42, 1 through 3. You know, a few years ago, I had a friend of mine call me up. He had a really close relationship with God, spent a lot of time in Bible study and prayer. Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful story, but he had somehow lost the presence of God, and he was distressed. What can I do? And he's not the only one. I've had several people over the years who've had a close walk with God only to seemingly lose it. And so that person resonates with the psalm. God, I, I, I'm missing your presence. God, what do I need to do to get back to you? Now, that's one side. I'll call that person the earnest seeker. But then there's another side, and that's the complacent Christian. And there's some people who don't mind missing God's presence. It just, it just isn't there. They may go through prayer as a duty, or they may go to church as a duty, but the real felt presence of God, they're comfortable with. And so I'd like you to think about that. Where are you? Uh, how are you? Can you tolerate being apart from the presence of God, or must you have it? What's your answer? Think back to the most moving worship experience of your life. Do you remember it? If you are not able to participate in worship as you have in the past, the words of the speaker will resonate with you. My heart breaks when I remember the past, when I went with the crowds to the house of God and led them as they walked along, a happy crowd singing and shouting praise to God. Why am I so sad? Why am I so troubled? I will put my hope in God, and once again I will praise him my Savior and my God. Psalms 42, 4 and 5. Yeah. You know, public worship is really important. And uh, during the coronavirus time, Coach Jake Taylor, pastor at Baywood Baptist, has talked to me about how uh, young people, people new in the faith, really are missing a chance to worship God. And we've made some really serious accommodations at Maywood so that people can come and worship safely and all the way from being spaced out in different rooms in the building to Tony and me currently right now watching on, on Facebook. And so there's this longing, this desire for young people new in the faith to come to the Lord. Then on the other end, there are people who are our age and older who are not able to come to church, and they're seriously missing the fellowship, the songs, the sermons, uh, the communion with God. And so they would resonate with that part of this psalm. Unfortunately, uh, we're learning in studies that there are people who have stopped coming to church during coronavirus, and they're not coming back. There's a term for them that escapes me right now, what to call them, uh, but they're satisfied with uh, just not being there. And then there's another trend that's among people who their children have left home, and they've just dropped out of church. As their kids left home, they quit coming. So for us, we need to look at ourselves and say, where am I? God, do I earnestly desire to come to you and meet with you? Or Lord, as I pray through this, the truth is I need to tighten up my life a little bit. I'm not as energetic and desirous of your presence as I could be. The writer of the psalm was unable to travel to the temple in Jerusalem. His distress in not being able to worship led him to pray for God's constant love to come to his aid. Here in my exile, my heart is breaking, and so I turn my thoughts to him. He has sent waves of sorrow over my soul. Chaos roars at me like a flood, like waterfalls thundering down the Jordan from Mount Hermon and Mount Mazar. May the Lord show his constant love during the day so that I may have a song at night, a prayer to the God of my life. 
Psalms 42, 6 through 8. Right. So if we can think back to my first illustration, of the man who called me who was distressed at the lack of God's presence, uh, it was such a burden to him. He prayed all day long about it. And that's what the psalmist did. He prayed all day long, God, I need to be reconnected with you. On the other hand, the complacent Christian, as I like to call that other alternative, uh, that person may be troubled and worried about a lot of things, but they're not worried about their life with God. And for them, their prayer may be hit or miss. One day I pray, one day I don't. I had a really good pastor friend of mine says, they have a little bit of Christianity like, like a little aftershave, just a little here, a little here, and off we go. Uh, our prayer may be a duty to them, not a passion. And so I would suggest to you again, look at your life, see where you are, and uh, just see uh, what God's doing with you. Obviously, I'm presenting you some extremes, and we most all of us fall somewhere in between the extreme. Uh, my encouragement to you is as you pray this, say, God, show me my heart and show me how I can respond better to you. The inability of the speaker in the Psalms to recover the sense of God's presence leads his enemies to taunt him, saying, Where is your God? He ends the prayer with a positive self-talk. He reminds himself that his situation is temporary and will be remedied by God's answered prayer. To God, my defender, I say, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go on suffering from the cruelty of my enemies? I am crushed by their insults as they keep on asking me, where is your God? Why am I so sad? Why am I so troubled? I will put my hope in God and once again, I will praise him, my Savior, and my God. Psalms 42, 42, 9 through 11. Right. And so for the earnest person who has lost, for whatever reason, a sense of God's presence, and they may have whispering in their mind, God's, God's left you, or you've done something to offend God, uh, for that, I would encourage you with these words. It's a promise, book of Jeremiah. You will seek me and you will find me because you seek for me with all your heart. And so I would say to you, keep at it. Sometimes, and this is full of historic literature, sometimes God withdraws the sense of his presence to build our faith. If that's the case for you, just go ahead and keep pursuing God with your prayer and with your obedience. He had promised you, you're gonna find him. Now, for the complacent people, uh, we need to look at this and we need to to listen to that phrase where they say, other people, where is your God? We may think we're walking with God, but the people around us may wonder, where is your God? Because of what we say and how we act. For all of us, Isaiah has a really good word as we end this up. Isaiah says, turn to the Lord and pray to him now that he's near. Let the wicked leave their way of life and change their way of thinking. Let them turn to the Lord our God because he's merciful, he's quick to forgive. That's Isaiah chapter 55, verses six and seven. Thanks for being with us today, Tony. Thank you for your help. Uh, if you have a prayer request, send me an email, bspread49 at gmail or private message me on Facebook. Tony and I'll pray for you. We'll ask our prayer team at the church to do that. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.